a very good morning to all the students in this session we are going to discuss the same concept from the last session that is the advanced encryption standard before going into the actual topic let us have a quick recap of what this aes algorithm is what we have discussed in the earlier session let us have a quick recap and then we'll go into the topic of discussing a detailed discussion on the various steps that are involved in every round of advanced encryption standard after that we'll quickly go through the slides and at the point where we have the concept of key expansion in advanced encryption standard there we'll have uh, a long prolonged discussion on how this key is expanded from four words to 43 words this is the agenda for today's session so what is the short form for this advanced encryption standard A yes, yes sir. A yes. Is it a block cipher or stream cipher? Block cipher. Sir. Block cipher. Super. And is it symmetric key cryptography or asymmetric key algorithm? Symmetric. Symmetric. Sir. Symmetric. Sir. Super. So what about the block size of uh, the data inside this uh, AES algorithm? 128 bits sir. 128 bit. 128 bit, right. And one important thing you should remember in this AES is this 128 bits are categorized as how many bytes? 16 16 bytes are 4 words. Four words. Right. So we will be dealing with these bytes and words, right? So more major operations that we perform in the AES, they depend on these 16 bytes or four words, right? Or one word. So we will be dealing with words concept or we will be dealing with the bytes concept. That is what I want to say. Uh, now tell me how many rounds are there in this AES algorithm? 10 rounds, sir. 10 or 12 or 14, sir. Super. 10, 12 or 14 but majorly we will have a discussion on the AES uh, standard which is called as uh, which takes 10 rounds right now tell me the key size of this AES algorithm 128 bits sir so it is 128 if we are taking the under consideration of AES with 10 rounds if you take the AES with 12 rounds, it will be 192 bits. And if you take AES with 14 rounds, so it is considered the key size is taken as 256 bits. Is it clear? Yes. Right. So we say that there are three variants of this AES. So AES 128 or AES 192 or AES 256 like that we will call this AES with these three different variants where AES 128 is the uh, major topic which we are going to discuss the remaining things also remains the same but the number of rounds and the number of operations and uh, the size of the key may vary that's it that's nothing more than that right and now coming to the number of sub keys how many number of sub keys will be there 44 sir 44 right so at each and every round each round consumes how many sub keys 4 right so for the 10 rounds we have 10 into 4 that is equal to 40 sub keys will be consumed f for all the rounds in the AES and the remaining 4 sub keys are consumed at the first round which we call it as uh, the add round key right or a pre preliminary thing right so our pre-round calculation 
now tell me what is the size of this block size means you can consider it as the plain text as well as the cipher text also right. now what is the need of this aes why aes if somebody asks you why we are going for this aes algorithm what is your answer So when some when you are asked the question why AES, you should start your discussion with the disadvantage of DES. What is the disadvantage of DES we have? What is the disadvantage? Yes, less key size. Why? Because the DES takes only 56 bits of uh, key size. This is not sufficient to deal with uh, the brute force attack or to deal with the differential cryptanalysis or to deal with the linear cryptanalysis. So these are the various attacks we have in the DES algorithm the, because of this low key size the DES is unable to handle this BFA, DCA and LCA right so that means the DES algorithm is vulnerable to these three types of attacks so to cope up with this they have increased the size of the key where we call it as the multiple DES So in the multiple DES, we have TDS, we can call it as TDS, which is triple DES, where we have this uh, two key D TDS and three key TDS. So here the key size will be 2 into 56, 112 bits, and here it will be 3 into 56, that is 168 bits. Though we are able to achieve or though we are making this TDS not vulnerable or resistant to this brute force attack DCA and LCA, the TDS takes a lot of time for processing. This is the disadvantage. So first point we have to discuss is the disadvantage of DES. The second point we have to discuss is the disadvantage of TDS where it takes a lot of time. right and the third point is this is the reason why we are going for this aes the reason is since the tds is take consuming lot of time for processing we want to reduce the time taken for the processing so for this purpose they have developed the aes and studies say that this aes is six times faster than TDS and the performance is also very good in this uh, AES when compared to that of TDS yeah. so for this reason we have we are discussing this uh, AES algorithm. and the next topic is uh, what is the block diagram what is the first step in the block diagram of AES pre-round calculations right it is pre-round calculation and after that we start our rounds so how many steps are there in the rounds each and every round this is very important so this is what we are going to discuss in AS. four steps what is the first one substitute bytes super right substitute bytes what we are going to do here is we are making use of the substitution so what is the box that is used for substitution is it s box or p box s box s box super and what is the second step we have shift rows shift rows that we call it as the permutation so we are not going to use a 
P box here but for the permutation we are making use of the shift rows by some number of bytes that we will see uh, while we are discussing the concept of shift rows and what is the third step mix columns sir. mix columns right so this is called as the mixing operation and what is the fourth step we have the last one again it is yes. add round key so here we are going to perform the XOR operation of the key with the result which we got from the mix columns right. so this is an overview of the block diagram and uh, then we have discussed the representations representations means how we are going to represent the input data how we are going to represent the output data how we are going to represent the keys and finally the one more important topic is the state array right how we are going to store the intermediate results all these things we have discussed in the previous class so how we are going to store the inputs and outputs are the keys or the uh, state arrays everything is represented by a 4 by 4 array right so if you consider the 4 by 5 4 array mm -hmm. let me take it as a box or table right so in this particular representation any representation whether it is the input representation or output or the intermediate results or the key you have to consider the call and major order right in general we have a practice of representing the arrays in the form of row major order but here you should give preference for the columns why because if we store the elements as columns four five six seven right. so this is a four by four array and when we represent the array in the column major order we can consider the columns as words so this entire column we call it as word 0 and the second column we call it as word 1 third column we call it as word 2 and the fourth column we call it as word 3 and what about the cell here what does the cell represent is it bytes or bits or words one byte sir it is equal to one byte that is equal to eight bits right so what we are storing in this particular cells are represented in the hexadecimal notation this is also very important so whatever we are storing here it will be stored in the hexadecimal notation that we will see with examples also right so this is the recap of what we have discussed in the last session and in today's class we are going to discuss the main parts or the main processing steps that are involved in each and every round so we'll discuss what substitute bytes is and what shift rows are what mix columns is and what add round keys are right So coming to the first step, what is the first step? It is substitute keys, sorry, substitute bytes. As I told that this is a substitution operation where you want to substitute some bytes with some other uh, uh, representation of the bytes right so what is that we are going to use here for the substitution it is s box if you remember the des algorithm there also we have used a substitution step where we have used the s box 
uh, can anybody recollect what is the size of the s box how many inputs are there and how many outputs are there so if this is s box we have six inputs and four outputs so this is six and this is four therefore the s box that we use in the des algorithm is a six by four s box it is right is it clear up to this point yes sir and how we have converted this s box uh, for input with six uh, inputs and four outputs is we have seen an example right for example if you consider a six bits like this we will take the first bit and the last bit right so one one is considered and we will convert it into the decimal equivalent here it is three so this first and last bit combinedly called and converted to the decimal equivalent will be representing the rows and the remaining bits that are present in between this uh, the first bit and the last bit that is 0 0 0 1 0 right you convert this into the decimal number this represents 2 and therefore this is called as colon right so we have we have seen a substitution table or the s box with 16 columns here right starting from 0 and ending with f and the number of rows are 0 1 2 and 3 so this three third row second column cell should be considered for substitution this is what the s box is what we have discussed in the des algorithm in the similar fashion here also we need to use the substitution therefore we are going for the concept of the s box but uh, what you should remember here is that this s box is a 16 by 16 s box right so what is the size of the des s box it is 6 by 4 6 inputs and 4 outputs but the s box of aes is a 16 by 16 s box where we have 16 inputs and 16 outputs right is it clear yes sir right so what we'll do is we have a 4 by 4 matrix right what is the state array we are taking here what is the size of the state array any array that we are considering in the aes is a 4 by 4 matrix and what is this cell representing what is the value of this cell that is represented here is it a byte or word Bytes. 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 Byte, right, and a byte consists of how many bits? Eight bits, right. And what is that I told? One important point that every cell makes use of the hexadecimal notation. For example, if I want to take the value of this cell, I can take it as two a. So what is this 2a means? This is a hexadecimal notation. So how can you convert this hexadecimal notation into binary? Any idea? So this is a hexadecimal notation. How we are going to convert this into the binary number? Any idea? Yes or no? Yes or no? 16 power 0 into 11 plus 16 power 1 into 2 sir no 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 no, no. that is uh, a conversion into the decimal number i'm asking you to convert this into binary number so what you can do is how many bits are required to represent 16 combinations 
how many bits are required to represent 16 combinations for example if i have one bit how many combinations two power one combinations that is two right if i have two bits how many combinations four two seven. square four if i have three bits how many combinations it is two cube that is eight, eight. so if i have four bits i have two power four that is 16 combinations so in general if you have n bits you can have the 2 power n combinations this is the generalized formula we have uh, for the number of combinations we get from n number of bits right so for 16 combinations how many bits i need two power 16 sir no 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 i am not asking that 2 power 16 bits and how many combinations i am asking in a reverse order I have 16 combinations. So, how many bits are required? Four bits. Four bits, right. So, what you will do is you represent this 2 with 4 bits and you represent this A with 4 bits. That's it. Simple combination. So, how can I represent this 2 with 4 bits? What is the combination I have? 4 bits means I have to take like this and I told that this uh, last bit will be 2 power 0 and this is 2 power 1 and this is 2 power 2 and this is 2 cube so if i take the place values here it becomes 1 2 4 8 right now tell me to get uh, the value of 2 where should i set the bit which bit i have to set set means uh, keeping it as 1 reset means keeping it as zero so to get to where should i keep uh, where should i set the bit is it the second bit or third bit or fourth bit second bit sir second bit right so the combination of the two will be zero zero one zero am i right or not you are now on yes sir. now what is the value of a so in the hexadecimal notation 10 right you know it right so in the hexadecimal notation uh, the number starts with 0 and after 9 they are represented as the capital letter uh, alphabets so a b c d e and f so this a represents 10 this is b is 11 c is 12 13 14 and 15 right so what is a here what is the value of 10 uh, a 10 sir. 10 right so how can i represent 10 in the binary format with four bits one zero one zero sir super one zero one zero right so every cell is having a hexadecimal value which can be converted into a binary value like this so in this byte of information the first four bits represents the rows and the second four bits represent the columns that's it right so what is that i told that what is the size of the s box we have what is the size of s box in aes 16 by 16 sir. super right it is 16 by 16 so we have 16 rows starting with 0 1 2 3 and so on up to f similarly we have 16 columns starting with 0 1 2 3 and so on up to f so how can i get a cell here how can i get a cell so the f out of this 2a the first hexadecimal value represents the row number therefore you have to take the 2 as the corresponding number and the second hexadecimal bit represents 
the colon therefore you have to take a from here so the cell which where the combination is there that value has to be substituted for example this 2a is having a value of 73 therefore after substitution the cell with 2a will be substituted with a value of 73 like that you have to perform this substitution for each and every box or each and every cell that is present inside this input or uh, state array anything you can take it is it clear the single point what you have to remember here is uh, the substitution box that is used for this uh, AS algorithm is a 16 by 16 array that's it right and how we have to consider the rows and columns the first four bits of the array should be taken as the row number and the next four bits should be taken as the column number that's it whatever combination we have at this uh, inter intersection of these rows and columns that value has to be substituted is it clear up to this point yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what is the second step we have? Shift rows. Right. So uh, the name itself is saying that we are going to shift the rows. So whatever output you have, what is the input of this shift rows? Where from I am getting the input of this shift rows? Substitute, please. Super, right. The output of substitute bytes uh, will be stored in the intermediary state array, and that state array is considered to be the input for this particular shift rows. Right. So, what is this row number here? It is 0, right? What is this row number? It is 1, it is 2, and it is so what the shift rows is telling us is we need to shift the rows towards the left hand side this is important nothing more than very simple operation this one right so we need to shift the rows towards the left hand side but when we are discussing about the shifting of bits or shifting of bytes we should tell how many bytes or how many bits you are going to shift for example left shift operator of 2 that means we need to shift the bits left side for 2 bits left shift operator of 5 we need to left shift the bits 5 bits like that similarly here also we need to tell how many bytes remember that we are not going to shift the bits bits is never used here we are going to shift the bytes so how many bytes we need to shift means it depends on the row number it depends on the row number so zero row here we have zero shifts that means no bytes are shifted one first row so one byte has to be left shifted second row here two bytes of data has to be left shifted and the third row here the three bytes has to be left shifted so this is how the shift rows has been designed clear we, i will tell you with an example how this is shifted but shifting a byte means for example let me take this row let us consider that it consists of 23 73 af and 1a like this so this is the first row of data we have clear i'm taking an example here so how many shift uh, uh, how many shifts you have to perform since this is the first row how many shifts you have to perform here
right so one byte has to be shifted so you shift this one and you shift af to this left hand side and here and whatever is thrown away you should fill it with the last one that's it so what is the resultant row i will get here it is 73 it is af 1a and 23 so this is the shift row result output of the shift row right for example if i consider the same thing same bytes as second row so how many shifts i have to perform two bytes two bytes right so what is the result i will get here so 23 and 73 has to be moved to this location so i will get it as a f 1 a 23 and 73 right and tell me what happens to this 23 73 af and 1a if i consider this as the zero throw zero throw means how many shifts you have to perform zero sir. zero so the while you are considering it as the zeroth row there are no shifts that are involved so whatever row we have the the row remains as it is right now tell me what happens to this particular row if this is considered as a third row so what is the result i will get So initially I have 23, 73 and AF and then 1A. So if I shift 3 bytes towards its left, so the first 3 bytes will go and is placed at the last. So it becomes 1A, 2, 3, 73 and AF. So is it clear about the shift rows? Yes sir. Yes sir. Right. After this, the intermediate results are stored in a state array. After uh, shifting the rows, it is stored in the state array. So this state array from the output of shift rows will be the input to the third step. What is the third step? Mix columns. Mix columns. Right so we call it as mixing also so in mixing what we will do is we will take the state matrix of 4 by 4 this is the input right and we will multiply this with a predefined matrix it is there is a predetermined or predefined matrix which takes the values as 2 3 1 1 and 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 and 3 double 1 2 this is a predetermined matrix nothing to worry about it so the designers have designed that we need to multiply the given matrix with this particular predetermined matrix So how we are going to multiply this predetermined matrix with the state array is we are not multiplying the entire state matrix with this matrix predetermined matrix instead of that what we'll do is we'll take the word so multiplication of word of the state array with the predetermined matrix this is what you should remember so how many words are there in this state array four words represented with the w0 1 2 and so I will take the first word so what is the size of the first word how many rows are there four. four rows right what is the size of the predetermined matrix predetermined matrix what is the size here four by four sir four by four right 
so i take this predetermined matrix 4 by 4 and the size of each and every word from the state array is 4 by 1 so what is the resultant matrix i will get what is the size of the resultant matrix 4 by 1 4 it is 4 into 4 1 by sir. 1 right so this is the resultant they this particular row will be kept here i am taking this w0 right w0 so the resultant matrix should be kept in the state matrix that represents the w0 like this you have to store and if i take w1 so the w1 should be multiplied the predetermined matrix should be multiplied with w1 which results in an output of matrix 4 by 1 and that should be stored in the w1 of the output matrix or output state error similarly if i consider w2 predetermined matrix multiplied by w2 of input state array results in a word of size 4 by 1 and it is stored inside w2 similarly w3 will be stored inside w3 right so this is a mixing mixing means we are going to multiply the predetermined matrix with the words of the state arrays which results in generating the words and that should be kept in the output state array so what is this state array this is a output so this is the output from the mixing so this will become the input to the last step what is the last step what is the last step that is add involved round. add round key sir add round key right so fourth one is add round key so as the name itself it is saying that we need to add the result with the key right so what is the size of the key what is the input i have here from the third one what is the input i have here what is this thing called this is a state array right and what is the size of each round key right for example k0 is represented with w0 w1 w3 and w3 and the first round key is represented as k1 which starts with w4 w5 w6 and w7 right so how many words are there in the key in the round key how many words are there four words right how can i represent these four words in a four by four matrix the state array is a four by four matrix and the key is also a four by four matrix so here we are going to add this round key to the previous result so adding you should consider it as the xor operation so we will perform the xor operation of the state array from the mixing operation or mixing step with the 4 by 4 matrix of the round key this will result in generating a 4 by 4 matrix and this is the final output from one round for example if you consider this is round one this is the final output of round one and this becomes this is stored in the state array and this becomes the input to round two where it involves all the four steps substitution bytes shift rows mix columns and add round key and after that whatever result you will get they will be given as input to round three like this the process is iterated and after round 10 this becomes the final 
encrypted text what is that encrypted text called as what is the other name it is cipher text what is the size block size of the cipher text in aes algorithm it is 128 bits right so this is how the aes algorithm works this is uh, the discussion on each and every step the detailed discussion on each and every step that is involved in the all the rounds of the aes algorithm is it clear up to this point you are now on mute yes sir right so now what we'll do is we'll quickly go through the slides and uh, we have discussed everything from this uh, aes algorithm except the key expansion right key expansion takes uh, almost half an hour so that we'll discuss uh, in the next session but uh, for the present point of time we will just rush through the slides right so everything you will observe here is uh, already discussed can you see the screen here yes sir right. so coming to the introduction part the advanced encryption standard is a symmetric key block cipher published by nist in december 2001 when was des invented Nineteen seventy-seven, sir. Nineteen seventy-seven. So after thirty-four years, we have another block cipher algorithm, which we are calling it as AES. Right. So it is also known as Rizindal algorithm. It takes the plain text in blocks of one twenty-eight bits and converts them to the cipher text. So the keys that are used are one twenty-eight in case of. Uh, Uh, 10 rounds of AES and 192 in case of 12 rounds and 256 in case of 14 rounds of AES. And the criteria defined for NIST for selecting this AES is how it is going to provide the security. What is the cost that is incurred in the implementing this AES and how this is implemented? So this I will discuss it uh, in the last point, right? So since the size of the key is 128 bit, so what is the key space I will get here? What is the key space? One twenty-eight bit key size means what is the key space? Two power one twenty-eight. It is two power one twenty-eight, right? So this is a huge key space where you cannot uh, break the AES algorithm using brute force attack. Uh, that it is very strong in resisting the differential cryptanalysis also and in the similar manner it is very strong in resisting the linear cryptanalysis also right so we don't have the attackers doesn't have any chance to break through this aes algorithm neither the bfa or differential cryptanalysis or lca they are not working on the aes algorithm so that is the strength of this aes algorithm and coming to implementation this aes algorithm can be implemented either by using the software or hardware also and the cost it it, it incurs less cost uh, because of a few elements that are required when compared to that of the des algorithm right so aes is a non fistal cipher that encrypts uh, and decrypts a data block of 128 bits it uses 10 12 and 14 rounds the key sizes are 128 192 and 256 it depends on the number of rounds this we have discussed already and coming to the general design of aes encryption cipher listen here this is a, the aes encryption cipher and we have another thing called as aes decryption cipher where we will use the same things but in the reverse order that's it as i told that the block diagram of aes involves the first step which is the pre round transformation which is called as a pre round calculation also 
for this pre round calculation we are inputting a key 0 which is of 128 bits and it is represented with words as w0 w1 w2 and w3 and after that we have rounds so for round 1 we will be inputting k1 which is also a 128 bit and it is represented with words as w4 w5 w6 and w7 right where we are making use of this key in the round actually out of these four steps where we are making use of this key is it in substitute bytes or is it in uh, shift rows or is it in mixed columns or the round add round key where we are actually using these keys in each and every round right so we are making use of this uh, keys in the last round where we are performing the xr operation of the state array with the keys right similarly in round 2 we are making use of uh, key k2 and like that we have n rounds right so these n rounds can be the 10 rounds or 12 rounds or 14 rounds and this is the relationship between the key size and the number of rounds so if the key size is uh, if the number of rounds is 10 we will take the key size as 128 if the number of rounds is 12 we will take the key size as 192 and if we have 14 rounds of AES we will take the key size as 256. Right. Since we are discussing it in, in the context of 128 bits ciphertext uh, remember that this is a round uh, AES with 10 rounds. Right. So for uh, AES 128 AES 128. How many number of round keys we need to generate? Each and every round we take one key. So 10 rounds, 10 key plus one additional key for the pre-round transformation. Similarly, if I take the AES 192. So how many sub keys you have to generate round keys? Uh, it is 12 rounds plus one pre-round transformation, right? Similarly, for AES 256. 14 rounds of the round keys plus one round key so totally this is 11 this is 13 and this is 15 so in general if you take the number of rounds as nr the number of round keys we are generating is nr plus one that's it nothing more than that so nr if nr is equal to 10 the number of round keys we are generating it 11 if the number of rounds are 12 we are generating 13 round keys and if it is 14 we are generating 15 round keys is it clear sir sir my screen i even said round out nala can ekkada apply Is my voice audible? Sir, your yes, voice is audible, sir, but Vida is not visible, sir. Okay. So we'll do one thing that uh, we'll stop our discussion at this particular point. Uh, I think you have seen the screen up to the discussion on the open board, right? All the four rounds you are clear. So we will stop our discussion at this particular point and we will continue the same session with uh, uh, from the next class. Right. We will start the discussion with the AES and quickly go through the slides and uh, of this AES and then we will wind up this AES after discussing a detailed discussion on the AES key expansion. It is one of the important topic from the 
examination point of view also right so that's all for today's session thank you one and all for joining the session